One of the most uncontroversial pieces of marriage advice I can give is that it's never a good idea to focus obsessively on the sins of the past. Even though, you know, this is a common mistake that people make in romantic relationships, most people understand, intellectually at least, that it's not productive or healthy to dwell on the slights that your spouse has committed in the past or the hurts they caused you long ago. Uh, in an argument, as soon as you utter the phrase, oh yeah, well, remember the time when you fill in the blank, you've likely destroyed any chance of reaching any mutual understanding or worthwhile resolution. Once you bring ancient history into the discussion, you've stopped having a discussion and instead turned it into a game of scoring points. Everything is clouded now by resentment and grudges. Nothing is solved by your decision to root through the past in search of ammo to use against your spouse in the present day. You've only created more problems without doing anything to address whatever problem started the argument in the first place. Often you've taken some small dispute and turned it into a much bigger deal than it ever needed to be. So one minute you're squabbling because your wife gave you a hard time about not using a coaster when you put your drink down on the coffee table. The next minute you're re rehashing an argument dating back to 2009. This is why it's best to move on from what has already happened and already been hashed out and allow your marriage to exist in the present moment where you both have control over the outcome. You cannot change the past. You only have power over the present and therefore, to some extent, the future. Now, if this principle applies to marriages, so too does it apply to much larger groups like, say, uh, a nation. In fact, it applies even more to nations than to marriages because at least the infractions committed by your spouse in the past were actually committed by your spouse, whereas the resentment that one group in a country may carry against another group in the country will often stem from sins that were not committed by anyone living today, nor against anyone living today. I mean, it's one thing to hold someone's past sins against them. Even that is often counterproductive and unjust, but it's an entirely uh, different thing, a much worse thing, to hold someone's past sins against someone else who had nothing to do with them. Yet this is exactly the situation that the woke race hustlers have tried desperately and with horrifying success to engineer. One of the reasons they've been so successful in stirring up these resentments, keeping ancient wounds fresh and still bleeding, is that they start the resentment building process very early, making sure to preach the grievance gospel to children from a very young age. Case in point, the latest uber woke episode from Disney's uber woke children's show, which is called The Proud Family. Now for a little bit of background, the Proud Family was originally a kid's show on the Disney Channel back in the early 2000s. It was canceled in 2005, and then in 2022, it became uh, just the latest reboot that nobody needed, nobody asked for, nobody wanted. The rebooted Proud Family, which can be found now on uh, Disney+, Plus, promises to be louder and prouder. And it certainly fulfills at least half of that promise. A clip from a recent episode has gone viral over the past few days, and in it, we are treated to uh, what we're told is a, a rap or a song about the sinister origins of the United States. And here it is. This country was built on slavery, which means slaves built this country. Tilled this land from sea to sea to sea. First it was rice, tobacco, sugar cane. Then Whitney did his thing and cotton became king. And we were its soldiers. Four million strong. strong. Fighting for America's freedoms, even though we remained America's slaves. slaves. Built this country. The descendants of slaves continue to build this. Slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. And we, the descendants of slaves in America, have earned reparations for their suffering. And continue to earn reparations every moment we spend submerged in the system. Systemic prejudice, racism, and white, white supremacy, supremacy that America was founded with and still has not atoned for. Slaves built this country. Not only field hands, but carpenters, masons, blacksmiths, musicians, inventors built cities from Jamestown to New Orleans to Banneker, Washington. Washington. 40 acres and a mule. We'll take the 40 acres, keep the mule. We, we made, made your families rich. From the southern plantation heirs to the northern bankers to the New England ship owners, the founding fathers, former presidents, current senators, the Illuminati, the New New World Order. Slaves, slaves built, built this country. country. We had Tubman, Turner, Frederick D. Then they say Lincoln freed the slaves. But slaves were men. And, and women. And only we can free ourselves. Emancipation, Emancipation is not freedom. freedom. Jim Crow, segregation, redlining, public schools, feeding private prisons, where we become slaves again. As we celebrate Juneteenth for, for the, the umpteenth time, time, our account is still outstanding. Because this country was built on slavery, which means slaves built, built this country. country. And we demand our 40 acres and a mule. Okay. You can keep the mule. Keep the 40. We're taking our freedom. Yeah. 
Just some nice, wholesome children's content. That's why I'll stick with uh, Bluey, I think. Okay, first of all, uh, there's been some misinformation about the content of that clip. People are saying that the Disney show uh, featured a, you know, an anti-American song. Well, that is anti-American, but it's not a song. It's literally just shrill voices chanting vacuous bumper sticker slogans without rhyme or rhythm, which I guess, you know, Sep doesn't really separate it much from uh, many other pop songs. But as Martin Luther King would say, we should judge woke propaganda by, not by its shrillness, but by its content. The content here is ridiculous on multiple levels. So let's, let's go through them. First, most importantly, um, and it is really necessary that we emphasize this, slaves did not build this country. Um, this country was built over the course of hundreds of years, beginning long before it was a country. The building started in the 1400s when the first European explorers sailed across treacherous and uncharted seas to discover these lands. It continued with the European settlers in the 1500s and 1600s who built a life for themselves in this unknown wilderness facing untold threats and for many of them certain death. This country was built by the colonists and the American revolutionaries. It was built by the pioneers who expanded the country from the east, heading west out into a hostile wilderness occupied by warring Indian tribes. It was built by war and conquest, by discovery, by diplomacy, by industry. It was built and then nearly undone by a civil war that killed 620,000 men, then built up again, only to thrive once more. The country was built by the people who made it into the world's great power in the 20th century, who won world wars and brought about peace and economic prosperity. It was built by many people over many centuries. And for a portion of that history, some people in some parts of the country own slaves. That certainly is not enough to justify the claim that the slaves built the country. To make that claim is to erase nearly everyone who really did build the country. It's to paper over America's actual history with your grievance-mongering nonsense. Now, if the mere historical fact of slavery automatically means that the country was built by slavery and forever is indebted to slaves and their descendants, then of course the same must be said about every nation on the planet. There is no race, no people, uh, no nation anywhere in the world who does not inherit the guilt uh, of, of slavery, if indeed the guilt of slavery can be inherited. As I will never tire of pointing out, the only thing that makes America's relationship to slavery unique is how comparatively quickly we abolished it and the lengths we went to abolish it. Western nations were patrolling the oceans, patrolling the oceans to shut down the slave trade for, for, for many years, while non-Western nations did everything in their power to continue the slave trade. Also, you notice something. You, you notice how I didn't use the word we when talking about the people who did build the country. Okay. A great many of the pioneers and explorers and inventors and warriors and statesmen and leaders, etc., who built the country were white. I mean, most of them were white. That's, that's, that's the historical reality. It just is. And we certainly shouldn't be ashamed of pointing that out or let ourselves be shamed into not pointing it out or denying it. Yet, as a white person, I don't say we because we would include me and I didn't do any of those things. I didn't come here on the Mayflower. I wasn't on the Lewis and Clark expedition. I didn't fight in the Civil War. I didn't storm the beaches of Normandy. People who looked kind of like me did, but I didn't. So I don't take credit for their achievements or claim their accolades, just as I don't pretend to have experienced their suffering or felt their pain. I stand at the end of this long line of triumph and sacrifice. I am its beneficiary. And so are you, whatever your race. Yet in that Disney song, that's not really a song, we hear the word we being used. And this is always the case with the race hustlers. They talk about the long ago sufferings of people they never met and who they missed meeting by a century and a half. And they say we and us. But no, it's not a we or an us situation because you were not enslaved. That didn't happen to you. It just didn't. It may have happened to your ancestors, but if you go back a little further, you may just as well find that your ancestors did it to others. See, this is, this is the problem of trying to claim 
uh, you know, your entire lineage as if it all happened to you, is that you cannot isolate this one particular moment in your ancestry and take direct ownership of it, speaking about it as if you were there, without owning all of the rest of your ancestral history. A history that is guaranteed to include brutality and impression inflicted on others by your ancestors, because literally everyone's ancestors are guilty of that. Because that is the story of the human race, not the white race, the human race. So, alternatively, you can choose to stand in the present on your own two feet, appropriating neither your ancestors' achievements nor their sufferings nor their sins. You could be your own person, located in this moment of time, equipped with the freedom and luxury given to you by those who died long before you were born. It's your choice, really. You've got two paths. And one gives you a chance at living a happy and successful life. The other keeps you wallowing pathetically in self-pity, obsessing over resentments that don't belong to you. It's up to you. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.